In a recent study, scientists presented a method for reconstructing skeletal morphology using statistical analysis of DNA. I won't go into the exact science, but the paper is linked in the description if you are curious. Denisovans and Neanderthals separated 390 to 440,000 years ago, and their ancestors split from our lineage between 520 and 630,000 years ago, though these dates are still subject to controversy. These images show the reconstructed profile of the Denisovan skeleton and skull, compared to modern humans and Neanderthals. Colors on the skeleton mark reconstructed Denisovan traits. The equivalent regions in the modern human and Neanderthal skeletons are marked as well. Traits for which direction of change could be determined are labeled. Arrows represent the direction of change in the Denisovan compared to modern humans and Neanderthals, and empty circles represent no detectable difference. Regions for which there is no reconstruction were illustrated in a more general way. Traits for which direction of change could be determined are labeled. Arrows represent the direction of change in the Denisovan compared to modern humans and Neanderthals, and empty circles represent no detectable difference. The most prominent difference in the Denisovan skull is the huge brain case and more rounded profile, compared to both Neanderthals and modern humans. The Denisovan skull is expected to have a lower forehead, compared to modern humans but similar to Neanderthals. Regions for which there is no reconstruction were illustrated in a more general way. Face height, the vertical length of the face, and face protrusion, how much the face projects forward, are marked with dashed lines. Two reconstructed 100,000-year-old skulls and a 300,000-year-old skull from China reveal a complex mix of trends that have been described as Neanderthal-like, but also having some modern traits. In the opinion of many researchers these skulls as in fact Denisovans, but Chinese anthropologists want to classify the skulls as a new species. Disagreement and caveman politics in anthropology is nothing new. But to some experts, the Denisovans fit this description, they are roughly dated to approximately 500 to 100,000 years ago, and their DNA shows that after hundreds of thousands of years of isolation, they mixed both with Neanderthals and early modern humans. This is exactly what the DNA tells us when one tries to make sense of the Denisova discoveries. Indeed, these Chinese fossils are in the right place at the right time, with the right features. Since their discovery, the Denisovans have been known only from bits of DNA, taken from a sliver of bone in the Denisova cave in Siberia, Russia. Now, two partial skulls from eastern China are emerging as prime candidates for showing what these shadowy people may have looked like. The two partial archaic human skulls, from the Lingjing site, near Xuchang, in central China, provide a new window into the biology and population patterns of the predecessors of modern humans in eastern Eurasia. Securely dated to about 100,000 years ago, the Xuchang fossils present a mosaic of features. With late archaic and early modern humans across the old world, they share a large brain size and lightly built cranial vaults, with modest brow ridges. With Middle Pleistocene Eastern Eurasian humans, they share a low and broad brain case, one that rounds onto the inferior skull. With Western Eurasian Neanderthals, they share two distinct features, the configuration of their semicircular canals, and the detailed arrangement of the rear of the skull. The nature of the immediate predecessors of modern humans in Eastern Eurasia has been poorly known from the human fossil record. The discovery of these skulls of late archaic humans substantially increases our knowledge of these people. Back in December 2007, archaeologists were wrapping up the field season in China, about 4,000 kilometers from the Denisova cave, when they spotted some quartz stone tools eroding out of the sediments. They extended the field season for two more days to extract them. On the very last morning, the team discovered a yellow piece of rounded skull cap protruding from the muddy floor of the pit, in the same layer where they had found the tools. The team went back for another six seasons, and managed to find 45 more fossils that fit together into two partial crania. The skulls lack faces and jaws, but they include enough undistorted pieces to note a close resemblance to Neanderthals and Denisovans. One cranium has a huge brain volume of 1,800 cubic centimeters, on the upper end for both Neanderthals and moderns. Plus a Neanderthal-like hollow in a bone on the back of its skull. 
Both crania have prominent brow ridges and inner ear bones that resemble those of Neanderthals but are distinct from our own species, Homo sapiens. However, the crania differ from the Western Neanderthals of Europe and the Middle East. They have thinner brow ridges and less robust skull bones, similar to early modern humans and some other Asian fossils. Yet, they are not Neanderthals, nor are the new fossils late occurring representatives of other archaic humans, such as Homo erectus or Homo heidelbergensis. The skulls are too lightly built and their brains are too big, according to the researchers. The skulls do share traits with some other fossils in East Asia, dating from 600,000 to 100,000 years ago, that also defy easy classification. Those features include a broad cranial base, where the skull sits atop the spinal column and a low, flat plateau along the top of the skull. The crania also resembles another archaic early human skull that dates to 100,000 years ago, found 850 kilometers to the north. But the evidence of these ancient people tracks disappeared in the ruins after the latest ice age in the Quaternary period, around 50,000 to 70,000 years ago. They lived in a warm age, and the warm weather would have boosted population growth. We have no idea where they moved during that ice age, but they might have migrated due to climate change. The hominids probably migrated to warmer regions, such as Indonesia, during the ice age. Then, during the last interglacial stage, when the climate got warmer, the ancestors of Xu Chang Man came back to North China. The migration might have happened many times due to climate change. According to Chinese anthropologists, those fossils, and the new skulls, are an unknown or new archaic human that survived in East Asia to 100,000 years ago. Based on similarities to some other Asian fossils, the new crania represent regional members of a population in Eastern Asia, who pass traits down through the generations in what the researchers call regional continuity. At the same time, resemblances to both Neanderthals and modern humans suggest that these archaic people mixed at low levels with other archaic people. Officially, these fossils are called, Archaic Homo, but the bones could be a new type of human or an Eastern variant of Neanderthals. But although the team avoids the word, everyone else would wonder whether these might be Denisovans, which are close cousins to Neanderthals, says paleoanthropologist Chris Stringer of the Natural History Museum in London. The new skulls definitely fit what you'd expect from a Denisovan, something with an Asian flavor but closely related to Neanderthals. But because the Chinese investigators have not extracted DNA from the skulls, the possibility remains a speculation. Professor Stringer also says the individual had a remarkable brain size, up there with the largest known Neanderthal and early modern examples. One cranium has a brain volume of 1,800 cubic centimeters, which is larger than the 1,400 cubic centimeters of a modern human. The brain volume of the other cranium is almost the same as that of modern humans. Like modern humans, the skulls have modest brow lines, lightly built cranial vaults and large brain capacity. As regards to any potential relationship with the Denisovans, unfortunately, the skulls lack teeth so we cannot make direct comparisons with the large teeth known from Denisova cave, but another similarly dated fossil from China does have Neanderthal-like traits in the ear bones, and does have large teeth, so these may all represent the same population. From genetic data, the Denisovans are believed to have split from the Neanderthal lineage about 400,000 years ago, about the same time of the early Neanderthals known from Spain. So one might expect some level of Neanderthal features in their morphology, added to by evidence of later interbreeding with the Neanderthals. However, the Xuchang fossil is not the only East Asian skull to sport an unusual combination of traits. For example, the partial Hualongdong skull, at least 300,000 years old, also has a different collection of mosaic traits, blending archaic and modern human anatomy with that of Neanderthals. Indeed, the Hualongdong skull's unique combination of features make the fossil a tantalizing clue to East Asia's diverse hominin history. Researchers excavating a collapsed cave site unearthed the skull, known as Hualongdong 6, aka HLD6. They also found additional partial fossils of archaic humans and animals, and assorted stone tools, over the last decade or so. Using the ages of surrounding mineral deposits and other material in the cave, the team determined the skull and other remains were about 300,000 years old. 
Unlike many East Asian archaic human fossils, which are often fragmentary, the Hualongdong skull is nearly complete and in decent shape, allowing the team to draw some firm conclusions about its anatomy. And that's where things get really interesting, because it has traits that are not straightforward. HLD-6 exhibits a suite of traits consistent with other archaic human remains from East Asia, such as a low and wide cranial vault, also called the skull cap, a low and wide nasal aperture, the opening in the skull for the nose, and reduced or absent third molars. But the Hualongdong skull also has a few features that seem transitional toward anatomically modern humans. Unlike the chinless, projecting faces of archaic humans and their ancestors, HLD-6 had a relatively flat face and somewhat of a chin. The evolution of the chin has long been debated in paleoanthropology, but everyone agrees only Homo sapiens have prominent chins. Many of these traits also are present in Denisovans, which had several hundred thousand years to evolve, and therefore would have had many regional differences. In fact, this skull looks almost identical to the skull recreated statistical using DNA analysis. The Hualongdong fossils are also by no means the oldest hominin remains found in East Asia. Multiple specimens of Homo erectus and related lineages have been unearthed going back more than 1.6 million years. Indeed, a study of more than 100 tools suggested that archaic hominins were in China 2.1 million years ago, though no hominin fossils of that age have turned up yet. So, while it's not a shocking find, HLD-6 is still significant. To understand why, we have to wade into one of the more contentious debates in human evolution. For decades, particularly in the West, the recent African origin model of human evolution has dominated. According to this hypothesis, anatomically modern humans evolved in Africa and then, in the last 50,000 to 80,000 years, spread out across Eurasia, displacing or absorbing any isolated populations of archaic humans still hanging on. But over the last decade, new fossil finds outside Africa have pushed back the dispersal date, though not all out-of-Africa proponents accept evidence of an earlier departure. Staunch advocates of the out-of-Africa theory typically consider finds such as Israel's Mislia one partial jaw, at least 170,000 years old, as evidence that a couple anatomically modern humans may have wandered out of Africa super early, but didn't get very far. Meanwhile, an alternative model of human evolution, the out-of-Eurasia hypothesis has gained traction. According to this hypothesis, when Homo erectus left Africa almost 2 million years ago, these early explorers didn't die out. They fanned out across Eurasia and continued to evolve, eventually becoming Neanderthals, Denisovans, and Homo sapiens. Then they returned to Africa around 250,000 years ago, and then leaving Africa again around 125,000 years ago and absorbing archaic humans in their path. The differences between the models may seem insignificant, for example, both models acknowledge interbreeding occurred in the last 100,000 years between the various populations of archaic and modern humans. But these competing paths of human evolution disagree over some of the core issues of our deep past, including how we define a species, and what makes us human. Indeed, the HLD-6 skull has some traits that are consistent with other archaic members of our genus that have been found in East Asia. It also has features that hint at traits unique to anatomically modern humans, which have not been found outside of Africa earlier than about 180,000 years ago. That's the Mislia 1 fossil, found in Israel, essentially on the edge of the African continent. Some anthropologists believe that at about 300,000 years old, the HLD-6 skull may be evidence of a transitional human that represents the evolution of archaic East Asian Homo erectus populations into East Asian anatomically modern humans. Alternatively, HLD-6 may simply be an anomaly, an archaic hominin with some quirky variations. Until researchers find more fossils, the Hualongdong skull will probably be interpreted according to whatever bias you bring to the table. But it seems that anthropologists would prefer to invent new species of humans, rather than acknowledge that it is Denisovan. The only way to truly identify a Denisovan is with DNA, and scientists try to extract DNA from the fossils but without success. Nonetheless, regardless of the new skull's precise identity, China is rewriting the story of human evolution. <laughs>